This is happening yes. now. It's not a future yes. thing. It's a now thing, right? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Yes. Uh, this is Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net. Uh, I'm... On Monday, it is February the 18th of 2019. I would encourage that everybody please go to StopTheCrime.net and sign up. Certainly go to our email blast outs and take a look at what we've sent out over the last 24 hours. Because much of what you will hear, you can also read and share and pass along. And we are now literally uh, in a situation where if you, any of you that are listening, are not taking some action in some way, you are a cause to the extinction of humanity as we have known it. And I can't say that any more harshly. That's a reality now. So I want to talk about what we're experiencing here in California right now. And again, I don't want to uh, categorize this only in California because we are being flooded now. And it's wars by flooding. This is a war flooding event. Make no mistake. It, uh, weapons are being used, and it is to create worldwide a situation that is going to require the complete rebuilding of all our foundational infrastructure. Because I'm going to tell you right now about the document that tells us that. And the title of this article has the document embedded in it. And the title of the document is Another Looming Climate Disaster, Dam Collapses. Another Looming Climate Disaster, Dam Collapses. Now, I'm going to read some of this, and we're going to talk about this, because this is what we all face worldwide. So they talk about specifically in our location here in California, that many of the major dams in California are five times more likely to flood due to global warming. A new study has found that possibly global warming will lead to overtopping of the dams and catastrophic failures that threaten and create costly repairs and evacuations. Now, they're talking certainly about the dam, the Oroville Dam, that nearly collapsed. They, it goes on to say that means California's, Californians can expect disasters like the Oroville Dam, who over, which overflowed channels and failures in 2019 after days of flooding had filled the state's reservoirs to 85% of their capacity, leading to the evacuation of more than 180,000 people and losses of upwards of $300 million. I'm going to pause right now. We have a YouTube up on StopTheCrime.net. It's uh, about how dams and reservoirs have been created to cause earthquakes, and they have literally we have been booby-trapped. Uh, things that we would consider to be um, uh, n not harmful are literally being set up, uh, and we're being victimized yeah. by a process. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, the, the most dangerous one is up in Yellowstone, uh, near the largest caldera on Earth, and that uh, that water, that reservoir, if it gets down underneath the magma, will cause the largest pyroplastic explosion in the last 80,000 years. Yes, and that's why I'm re directing everybody to the YouTube uh, about uh, the earthquakes that are caused by the load of water um, and the dams with the load of water, um, certainly maneuvering the secondary water supply around, which was never necessary because we have uh, primary water. But to go on with this looming disaster and all these collapses of our infrastructure, they talk about how UCLA researchers concluded the Oroville Dam spillway overflow was worsened by climate change. So I want to talk about something real quick before I jump back into this article. This is absolutely the most important thing for people to understand. I've talked about the Paris Climate Action Agreements and how they are localized in our cities through the climate action plans that have been adopted and now activated in all of our cities. I cannot underscore enough for everyone to type in the name of your city or your state or your country on the search line followed by climate action plans. What you need to know is that these plans literally are the template with the technology 
to tell us about global warming and how we must keep and reduce the temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius, or they will crank the temperatures up over 2.0 degrees Celsius or more if a nation or state or region is not politically obedient. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about using weather weapons to attack states, cities, counties, and our homes. This is what we're talking about. And when you look at resilient plans, I want you to think about it like this. And I really appreciate people that listen to the broadcast and actually contribute going to local meetings and seeing for themselves what is happening. And this was an, an absolute brilliant definition of resiliency and resiliency. The resiliency plans that are also adopted in all of our cities, again, type in your city, followed by resilient plans. And resilient plans that have been adopted in all of our communities worldwide. Did you know what resiliency means? This is what resiliency means. Resiliency equals repetitive loss through weather weapons, which will require all of us to retreat into mandatory smart cities, cities that are built upon the Internet of Things, built upon wireless everything, frequencies of death to all living things. This is what resiliency means. So when you think of resiliency, think of weather weapons and economic weapons creating repetitive loss. That is managing our retreat. And we see this happening with the refugees all over the world. We see the increased homelessness. So now I'm going to go back in to the planned global-wide infrastructure foundation of everything that is going to economically bankrupt every city everywhere as weather weapons literally seize and take over the ability for our current um, infrastructure to handle it, such as wastewater treatment plants. We're seeing here in the storms, we're seeing fecal material, raw sewage flowing out of manhole covers into streets because they're being flooded over. The, the treatment facilities are, are being inundated with floods, and it's so much more. So I'm going to go on. They talk about, in this article, another looming disaster. Uh, they talk about how um, the Oroville Dam shows what the changes of these failures look like and will become our new normal due to climate change. In other words, infrastructure foundational collapse is the new normal because the enormity of the weather's weapons assaults on us worldwide are deeming all of the original infrastructure will not be capable of withstanding the assaults. And we have to understand, they talk about how Snow, heavy snows build mountain snowpacks, but higher temperatures will mean that much of the mountain snowpack will instead fall as rain, leading to floods, the new report has found. Wow. In a warmer world, we can expect more precipitation or more rain, which influences flooding. This is flooding warfare into the future to ask about the probability of how this will all be affecting the dams. They are causing the dams to collapse by war flooding. According to the report, they go on to say that uh, combined results of many climate models, assuming business as usual for the cl- global climate, and they say the roughly 7-degree Fahrenheit rise path that the world is on now with a hydrological model of major dams and rivers. The study has analyzed a less severe future 
if humanity decides to lower its greenhouse gas emissions, lies, lies, and more lies. It's terrible, isn't they, it? They go on to say, California's legislature, and I want everyone to think about your legislators, not just the word California, because all the legislators, all of our legislators throughout the world are complicit. Now, it says, California legislatures released a report noting that the state has 678 high hazard dams with many needing repair or immediate upgrades. Well, by the way, the, the Governor Newsom was the guy who was supposed to repair it before they had the floods last year, and luckily they didn't have the, the major floods were expected this spring. But because they haven't repaired it, the, flag, the fact that the Oroville Dam is going to flood could affect a quarter million people's homes. Absolutely. And uh, the report goes on, uh, and it raises the questions about floods and earthquake risks to the state's levees. And the noted American Society for Civil Engineering estimated around um, a cost to repair and do the upgrades a minimum of $18.6 billion in California alone. And you know that's a low number. Right. And in this article, you will see a map of the United States, and it will talk about where the infrastructure is the most vulnerable, but I will tell you it's vulnerable everywhere because right. of weather weapons. They go on to say that it's clear that climate change has already changed the climate in ways the study outlines. They go on that the climate scientist of Stanford University questions uh, about aging water uh, in infrastructure built for snow instead of rain that we now see in the future. So what they're saying is that our old infrastructure was built for a different kind of climate. But because all of you have not lowered your greenhouse gas emissions, we're going to have more uh, changes and swings in the climate, a.k.a. weather weapons assaulting us to right. a greater degree. So they go, they go on to tell us that the study finds these warmer temperatures will mean more rain, less snow will fall in the mountains that serves as the snowpack reservoir for rivers and dams. And snowmelt will happen earlier and floods will result more frequently. So it's important to understand the new terminology for snowpack. It's, it's being called snow drought. So for all of you that want to know the uh, Luciferians' names for these assaults on us, you now know. We're being uh, psyopsed into believing we're in a snow drought. Now, I can only tell you this report that accompanies this article is beyond diabolical. And it, and it says a number of things that I want to get into, but because of the enormity of the events that I wish to cover today. I'm not going to go into this as deeply as I would like, but again, I want to let everybody know that it tells us this in this document. The world faces a pivotal, pivotal moment at which political leaders at all levels need to commit to making a sustained climate safe investment in the very foundation of its economy and its communities, safety and well-being, as if our future depends upon it, and it does. So this is bankrupting all governments. And I will tell you, I have found in World Bank documents the investments now by the global elites and the types of requirements that will be required when countries want to build dams and reservoirs, and how those countries will now be responsible for the uh, loss of life as a result of creating earthquakes. The World Bank knows this. The entire economy is being changed now and being controlled in ways that none of us can possibly imagine, and we're bringing these documents to your attention. So and why it's get happening back, now is because the poll shift is happening, and we'll talk about that in the third segment. I'll just insert a little information because we can do whole shows on that. You have to understand, they're in a panic, the globalists, to get it all accomplished now, right? The main question I would say to uh, Deborah is, why now? 
Why now? Why now? The reason is there's earth changes occurring now that are forcing the globalists to make their moves now, which is why they're sloppy. Please continue. Well, uh, I want to talk about, again, I encourage everybody to get their newspaper, read it, understand the backstories. Uh, but I do want to read a story here right now because there's much conversation about the United States and Mexico border. And I want to talk about the border in a different context because this is a front page uh, off of our um, newspaper. And it's a New York Times article, and the headlines are Mexico Waste Pollutes Rivers in Border Towns. And what they're talking about here is how for a long and in the Mexicali area of the border region, for many generations, uh, residents of the Southern California border towns of Cal Calexo have watched uh, their river turn into a cesspool contaminated with human and industrial development waste on the other side of the border in Mexico. They talk about how the, no no the no nauseous sewage filled with feces and industrial chemicals and other raw waste regularly comes in through the new river, which flows from Mexico's Mexico Valley through Calexico and leaves neighborhoods along the waterways engulfed in odors so severe that it smells like farts when people walk outside their houses. And that's just from the river. And then they talk about how there's smoke billowing from Mexican factories, illicit medical burn sites, and uh, fire pits fueling widespread asthma in the entire region. So what they go on to tell us is the diabolical, because in, in, a, in an, a horrific way, this river is a control mechanism for the border. But people just don't realize when they're trying to flee over the border, they're actually uh, potentially exposing themselves to illnesses of death. And they go on to say this, these rivers are pits of infestation. It smells, uh, it's horrible. People that live there have to keep their windows closed. Uh, they've uh, treated the new river as a drain rather than a river, discharging raw, untreated sewage from Mexicali homes and businesses directly into the waterways. The explosive growth they talk about in Mexicali into a city of about a million people in recent decades is, is, has been accelerated by the North America Free Trade Agreement, which has exacerbated the problem. They go on to talk about how today, even after various cleanup efforts, large mounds of unnatural foam and piles of trash illegally dumped float atop the dark green streams, which flows into the United States through a hole in a slotted border fence and flows north into the Salton Sea in California. Did you know this? Well, now you do. Yeah. goes on to tell us that the homes adjacent to the rivers that are occupied by, in, by largely low-income residents uh, have and work in the agriculture have no political clout. This is, of course, all of you knowing. This is not about political clout. This is about genocide. But let me continue with this article. They say many have called for closing the river and diverting its waters to filter out pollutants and they go on to say that this poses a security issue for border agents uh, said a spokesman for the customs and border prevention smuggling organizations still use the river to move humans into the united states noting that border agents are unable to go into the water and chase border violators because it is too hazardous the air pollution concerns and the students that are near and, and attending schools in those areas regularly cannot go outside because of the air quality and the dangerous air quality. And about 20% of the children in that region have asthma, uh, the higher statistics because of these pollutants. They go on, it's not just about money, it's about holding Mexico accountable, they say. Some of these hospitals are also going out at night and burning medical waste. And the waterway is a pit 
of infection. So you know now a little bit more about the insidious kill grid using water along the border. But the waterways there in Mexico doesn't stop with just that waterway. Here in the United States, our waterways are being intentionally poisoned as well. So you're only hearing about this because certainly I recently found out that here when we um, we found out that San Francisco can uh, literally dump uh, fecal material because they use a system, a combined sewerage pipe system, along with uh, dispersing groundwater. That it's a combined system. And they're allowed to dump this fecal material 25 times a year into the Pacific Ocean. So think about all the other dumps that are allowed by this evil regime that is set on destroying humanity. We're going to talk about power outages a little bit right now because we're experiencing many more outages uh, as a result of the new plans to direct energy from space using solar. We have to understand that these uh, new technologies are going to wipe out uh, our ability to survive on this planet because the 5G and the other systems require power, and uh, they will be getting power continuously from space so that there will be multiple layers of assaults with the, um, the grid system that is being deployed on all of us now. It's important to understand that with all of the disasters that we all face, we're finding that uh, disaster monitoring is coming in, uh, warning cent centers using cameras and systems, they say, which will allow threat assessment to get notifications out to areas to help determine where the power will be shut down. And here in California, the agencies that will um, certainly be involved in telling the utilities that the power will be shut down is the CPUC, CAL FIRE, and OES. But let me make it perfectly clear. clear. These agencies are under the dictates of Rothschild, who are running the utilities throughout this entire world. Now, I want to talk very quickly um, about uh, sea level rise. There are local meetings now being held in coastal communities. I would recommend all of you type in sea level rise meetings. They're insidious. And it is planned retreat and organizing the words so that all of you will become familiar with how you will be forcibly relocated off your coastal and out of your coastal areas. And um, it was interesting because we're getting reports now from people that are actually throwing in and doing some homework and going to some of their local meetings. And we're learning about the changes in which the planned retreat uh, is being sold to the people. So what do I mean by planned retreat? We have a YouTube up, and it's entitled Coastlines Under Attack, Storm Surge Artificially Created. And to understand what I'm talking about, I would really recommend you listen to the YouTube on StopTheCrime.net. Again, Coastlines Under Attack and uh, Planned Retreat. Because what we're now finding in these local meetings is the assault on a very, very exclusive, wealthy coastal community in Southern California called Del Mar. The citizens uh, hired attorneys, fought against the city, putting into their ordinances that because they were low-lying, sea-level homes, uh, they wanted to put uh, planned retreat, and the, the citizens fought against that and were able to uh, prevent the city from entering this requirement into city code, which would have, of course, decimated the value of their homes and certainly selling homes. Uh, and uh, so what they have learned from that, again, it's always lessons, lessons learned as they create these diabolical plans based on weather weapon attacks, and they learn lessons on how the cities and how communities fight against their plans. And so uh, what, what they're now doing in their coastal sea level rise town community meetings now, and why I'm underscoring this is 70% of the global population lives in coastal low-lying areas. 
So what we're discovering is uh, when the mandatory receipt re- retreat comes here in California, for example, it will come in the form of FEMA or the Coastal Commission dictates, and properties deemed unfit to repair from sea level rise will have no value, and its occupants occupants will have to relocate. And sea level rise awareness is now being uh, psyopsed through these meetings, creating the illusion of all of this as being climate change and our lack of complying with the reduced um, uh, temperatures, all, get, all again a psyops. But these meetings uh, about climate change, of course, is the primary factor in sea level rise. We all know that. And the um, uh, consulting of, uh, firms that conduct these meetings uh, aren't speaking about, of course, the biggest contributor to climate change, which is geoengineering. They, of course, don't discuss that. But what happens to the homes in the sea level rise areas that are being deemed uninhabitable was asked by one of the participants at one of the meetings. And they asked, does the government compensate these people who lose their homes uh, to sea level rise? And the uh, consultants answered and said, well, you can understand that the cities do not have that kind of money. Most waterfront homes are very exclusive and expensive. And the sea level rise con artists, consultants, are rolling out planned retreat in other cities now. And it's important to understand what they said happened in Del Mar and why they pulled back in was the Del Mar residents were triggered. The property owners who banned and sued to prevent the planned retreat from the city ordinances. So again, lessons learned, advance in forced retreat operations slowly. And uh, I'm very happy to say that one of the participants in one of these local sea level rise meetings wrote an article and it was posted in their local paper these are which these are ways in which all of you listening can act and we all must in whatever way we can and here's the article that was published sea level rise agenda have you been at a local sea level rise meeting you should this is the bottom line sea level rise adaptation policies eventually result in planned retreat due to repetitive loss as sand berms can be replaced only so many times a home can be repaired just so many times and buildings and people will be removed from the coastlines by orders of the Coastal Commission and or FEMA, and no monetary compensation for your losses will be given to any of you. And again, watch the YouTube, Coastlines Under Attack, Storm Surge, Artificially Created. Now I'm going to move over to a diabolical situation. That is uh, nothing short of um, a complete annihilation of humanity as you started this uh, program, Dr. Yeah. Bill. Yeah, and we're going to have it. We'll just have another minute, and then we'll get really into it after the break. Okay. Go, go well, ahead. we're going to get into the diabolical, uh, but again, I want to remind everybody we're not running out of water. Uh, go to Primary Water. Um, Org. Also listen to our YouTube, Primary Water Explained. Part of the process of uh, a murder is to reduce the water and the oxygen supply. So we'll be back in just a moment. Yeah. Par- parallel with reducing the geomagnetosphere and a protection from cosmic background x-rays and radiation, too. Ultraviolet light, etc. All planned, isn't it? Uh, you're about to get into something that's pretty dark, and uh, I'm sure... I don't know if you've recently been over on the Rents Network. Rents covers deeper stuff than even, you know, coast to coast radio, and he's got excellent evidence. I mean, we, whenever we talk about anything, I totally agree with virtually everything Rents and his experts have talked about. And what you're talking about right now is so freaking scary. And I'm an expert on AI, artificial intelligence, and so. So I want to so. break into what we're going to talk about, Doctor Bill, because 
Uh, everybody needs to go over to StopTheCrime.net, uh, click on our email blast outs, and you will be able to download what you're going to hear us discuss right now. And that's right. why I recommend you sign up for our blast outs because you will get these emails. Right. So what we're going to talk about right now is the executive order by the president which is accelerating America's leadership in artificial intelligence, AI. And here's what you need to know about this, and this is an insider comment, and we follow it with some definitions before uh, we get into the executive order itself. But here's the insider comment about AI. Accelerating America's leadership in artificial intelligence is driven by the Pentagon and the Department of Defense. The Pentagon and the Department of Defense fear that the Russian Federation, China, India, and Pakistan might outpace them in weapons and mind control AI technologies. The shadow government leaders believe that all future wars will be robotic and cybernetics, all run by advanced AI, mitigated and mediated through interdimensional quantum circuitry. These new quantum weapon systems will easily overpower all conventional weapons, including nuclear, and allow direct spying into any and all electronic circuits into our brains, sounds or voice inside shielded buildings, or even into deep underground military bases. Now we're going to get into this executive order. This is diabolical, and this is what is happening now. By the way, executive order signed by President Trump, right? Absolutely. And he signed it on February 11th of 2019. I'm going to go over some high points. So he signed this executive order laying out the national plan to boost artificial intelligence technology amid growing concern that the U.S. is losing out to China. And the executive order directs federal, federal agencies to prioritize and set aside funding for AI programs while opening up the way for researchers and developers to access more government data. That would be all of us accessing more data. A continued American leadership in artificial intelligence is of paramount importance in maintaining the economic and national security of the United States. The order directs all federal agencies to look into launching and expanding AI initiatives that promote their missions. The order also asks a coalition of government bodies to develop a set of national regulatory standards around AI which the U.S. currently lacks. The standards will address some of the ethical issues posed by AI, including privacy concerns around increased access to government data on all U.S. citizens. The executive order directs the National Council for the American Worker and AI Select Committee to set up fellowship and training programs to help U.S. workers learn the skills needed to work with and develop AI technologies. goes on to say that the deputy assistant to the president for technology policy in a statement said the executive order aims to prioritize AI preparing America's workforce for jobs of today and tomorrow. Artificial intelligence is something that touches every aspect of people's lives, from the way they receive medical care to the way they grow or eat their food, to the way that energy is extracted or resources are extracted from across the country. For example, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration could use satellite data to improve severe weather predictions, and the Department of Transportation could... Um, use more resources and automated vehicles safety systems. Uh, I'm going to pause for a moment because we have to understand that the illusion of uh, autonomous vehicles and the illusion of how uh, 5G will serve us is a scam. It's all being built upon the reality that these are death technologies to eliminate the populations. So we need to know that. That's why our uh, participation now must we must all engage in getting this information out you must now all engage but they go yeah. on to say yeah. that, on the that docu by the way in that document where is the link um deborah 
uh, people can go to stopthecrime.net, go to um, our menu, click on email blast outs, and you can download this for yourself. But I'm going to continue on with this, Dr. Bill. Till yeah, I, I've got the email. I just can't find it to a direct link, but I'm sure it's there. Well, you, you'll find it, and everybody else will as well. But the yeah. order does, does not lay out a specific timeline or tangible goals on AI. And it goes on, administration officials said a more detailed plan would come over the next six months. The order comes two years after China announced a detailed plan to become a global leader in artificial intelligence. Other countries, including South Korea, Canada, France, have also made major commitments to improving their AI technologies. Industry leaders and tech experts have been calling on the Trump administration to step up the prioritizing of AI to stave off the advances from China and other competitors. And they go on to say that AI will become a dominant force, and they think that China is, of course, rapidly catching up. Um, with the United States. And then there's many announcements from the Hill uh, talking about how artificial intelligence has great potential to benefit the American people while enhancing our nation's security and growing our economy. And uh, the committee chairman uh, statement said also that today's executive order will ensure that the United States remains a leader in emerging technologies and scientific development. Tech, tech, uh, tech companies see an opportunity to cash in on AI, and a number of prominent firms release statements uh, calling for the order to step towards a comprehensive national strategy on AI. And it's very, very important to understand that um, what we have now uh, is a combination of 5G and AI uh, running on the backbone of 5G. This is the elimination of all humans. That is what this is now. And when you think about autonomous vehicles and the fact that they're driverless cars, it's because there will be no people in need of driving these cars as we are forced by planned retreat off of our lands into these Internet of Things cities that are hooked up with frequencies. This is what this is all about. And here we go with our representatives saying, I think that there are opportunities for all aspects of government to employ these technologies, but it's important for each organization to take stock of their mission and understand what their goals are for employing machine learning. Also, they say that most AI experts who spoke with the Hill said there are significant concerns the government should address, particularly with AI technologies that are uh, biased against minorities and marginalized communities. Go on to talk about how the cyber law expert told the Hill there needs to be an examination of the way in which artificial technology can be biased, the way it can be disproportionately harmful to vulnerable populations. And yeah, he but, said, but the, the AI stuff comes completely from the central nodes at Shriver Air Force Base, Vulcan, Colorado. I was taken there supernaturally a year before I actually. I've discussed it on many shows, including rents over the years, so please continue. Well, what we need to understand is what is rolling out on top of all of us and into all of us. 5G and is in, the final layer of it, isn't it? Well, 5G has also an executive order here in the United States. It's a, it's a worldwide rollout. So what we need to understand is beyond frequencies and beyond blocking the calcium channel, 5G is going to impact the biofields, the organizing field of all life, pushing us into directions that will change our genes, disrupting all life forever. And by redirecting life forms and us into something else that's other than human. And in a few generations, we will not recognize ourselves. So it's important to understand what we face. It's un important for everyone to activate and understand. I would urge everybody to please follow uh, Mark Steele's gallant fight uh, against 5G in Europe and listen to his interview, which we will be posting on Stop the Crime. Dot net, 
and understand that the 5G uh, is a war system. It's planned and set up to kill humans. And uh, this is a very, very important interview. Uh, uh, the discussion I found, Dr. Bill, most interesting, or I should say there's nothing that is more interesting, the entire interview by Mark Steele is phenomenal, but uh, is the discussion about the fires that have certainly um, imploded from the inside in our homes here in Northern California, and how literally um, he believes because these homes imploded from the inside um, out due to the microwave radiation in the homes and in the walls and the buildings, and that's gassing off from the inside, and that carbon-based fabric of our homes, deck phones, smart meters, cell phones, wireless appliances, Wi-Fi, etc., are gassing off the fabric in the buildings, and using, ra- and of course, radiation is a class one carcinogen, but goes on to talk about how uh, it is eliminating the oxygen in the air as well because of the pulsing of the uh, water molecules and uh i i will uh i will delve into this on our our program next yeah. monday because yeah. what, there's what's just happening not... is they're killing the carbon oxygen cycle with pollution in the upper benthic layer of the oceans they're interfering with our biology and you're right epigenetically you can change someone um uh, i have technology that can block this by the way well, we're going to need to get a hold of that because in order to survive, we're going to need equipment. We're it's going not just to... on a physical level, you see. You have to understand, they understand the nature of the universe. The entropic world is overlaid by the negentropic world of consciousness and by the eternal world. And all three realms exist at the same time and can coexist. And what they're doing is they're using technology that's way beyond the average person or even scientist uh, on the 21st century. We're not just talking about re- scalar radiation that can affect human biology. We're talking about literally uh, changing the actual direction of time, the time-space continuum. Well, this that's true. And, I, and getting back into this interview with uh, Mark Steele, which I find many aspects of what he discussed extremely important, and he talked about human compromise and how the underground facilities for the elites that are set up for them to be safe and protected. Right. And for those people that go down with them, they need to understand your targets. You are the people that they were gonna, are going to take down first. So if you've signed uh, any kind of non-disclosure agreement, it's, under, it's important to understand that is your death certificate, and that's the death certificate non-disclosure agreements you've signed for all of us. By not speaking out, you are contributing to the extinction of all humans and all biological structures on this planet. Time to step out and aside. You will not survive. You will be yeah. killed first. Silence is lethal, in other words. Yes, absolutely. Check thank it out. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Amazing and show. Thank you, Deborah. We'll be back in a moment with Josh Bernstein. Amazing show. Lots of stuff to talk about. Don't miss it. Call in for...